Next speaker I have is Councillor Cordova. Thank you, Mayor. And I would at this first instance like to commend the hard work of the author and authoriser and this very comprehensive strategy. And I concur with Councillor Midgley and Councillor Fox that it is exciting and opens up a wealth of possibilities before us. The particular areas of interest for me are the development of a civic spine that links the Channel Highway and John Street. And I endorse the notion of creating a new laneway or several new laneway experiences. I think it opens up a whole realm of possibilities, particularly 1D. I'll draw our attention to that on page 52, the discussion about pedestrian, active transport and public transport options into and out of the town centre from the peripheral residential areas and surrounds. I wholeheartedly support the idea of healthy spaces and places and having a healthy by design approach where we consider health and well-being in all aspects of our planning and our execution of our, our council services. I wanted to talk briefly though, Mayor, about the tyranny of low expectations. And in this regard, I point to 4.5, where it says this strategy identifies these as desired strategic priorities. And I wanna take this moment to say that these priorities should be critical, they should be necessary, they should be indispensable, they should not just be desired. And whilst I fully endorse this strategy and I fully commend the great work of the staff and of the, the entire consultation process and everybody who was involved with that, uh, it's also really important that we as councillors open up our imaginations for how good Kingborough could be and how good our CBD could be. And with that said, I wanted to point us to 3A and 3B because to me that it speaks volumes about what uh, the next 30 years for the Kingston CBD could look like. To bring nature into the centre through plantings, landscaping and greenery. Networks of diverse open space, places for people to sit, stay, play, socialise, strategically located and connected throughout the precinct. To me, it's so exciting that we have this opportunity and I think it's critical that we have this long-term vision, a 30-year plan. And the reason for that is we never know when the next city deal will come and knock in. We'll never know when that next opportunity is there. And that's why it's critically important to have these shovel ready plans available so that we're able to make the most of those opportunities when they come to us. But I love this idea that, and it's in 4.10, that Kingborough should, or Kingston should be a place that is a green, walkable and engaging place to stay and visit. I note that the risks that have been identified in this very comprehensive report that's full of fascinating tidbits so I, I really encourage everybody listening to take a look at the report in its entirety because there's all kinds of interesting facts and figures in there but when we look at what the primary risk is of this of this uh initiative the primary risks involved with the adoption or otherwise of the kingston play strategy relate to stakeholder expectation that there are now going to be heightened public expectations and it's going to be necessary to communicate the real constraints that we have as a result of the, the COVID crisis, as a result of the financial crisis and going forward the many obstacles that I have no doubt that we will face in implementing this vision. But so important is that we as individuals choose to widen our expectations of what council can provide, to widen our imagination of what a livable city looks like, so that we always put health and well-being at the heart of every decision that we make, so that we always put healthy by design principles into our day-to-day -day operations, and that we dispense with the tyranny of low expectations, and we look to places which are doing it right, places which are resplendent with green walls and renewable energy on every rooftop, places that are, are beautiful to look at and enjoyable to sit and stay and wonderful to visit. Um, these places are all over the world. There are some places here in Tasmania, places on the mainland, look at New Zealand or look at a number of places throughout Europe where they have made cities livable through visions like this. So I commend the work once again of everybody involved in putting this together. I look forward to seeing its implementation and I also encourage each and every one of us to strongly consider the imagination and to strongly consider our expectations and to expect much more of council, of planning, 
and of the future King Brother than we currently expect. And to that end, I really would look forward to seeing a new specific area plan with teeth, something that can actually encourage, because I, I wholeheartedly agree with the Mayor that it is better to be bringing along stakeholders and business owners and have them voluntarily contribute to this vision. But I also recognise that to do business as usual, uh, some, you know, the, the the definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. And if we haven't seen people springing voluntarily to some of these initiatives, then there could very well be a time where by promoting this vision, by strongly encouraging it, and also potentially elements here and there to mandate them in the new specific area plan, well, I look forward to that conversation when we have it. But thank you once again, and that's all from me. Thank you, Mayor.